Hello, this is Michael Hexter. Welcome to Politics 2100 here on YouTube. So this episode I'm calling No Need to Wait, colon. AOC should run for president in 2024 to save the U.S. from mediocrity, comma, extinction. So a little bit of a dry humor there in the um, way that's phrased. Uh, in terms of both mediocrity and extinction being paired together there. Um, but anyway, this is a following up on episode, I think it's 115, where I was talking about either Bernie or AOC running for president in 2024. And I was in that presentation uh, favoring AOC as being the better candidate uh, for that job, uh, partly due to age, but also due to some other factors related to her, I think her potential as a politician. And uh, just, you know, in general, she has an approach that I think is fresher and is uh, potentially more uh, aggressive, I think, than what uh, Bernie has offered in the past. And might offer in the future. Anyway, I don't I don't want to say that he wouldn't offer himself in a different light if he were to run again in 2024. And um, but in general, he's uh, had a I think a crouching. I mean, he literally crouches sometimes when he speaks, but also I think that crouching to me bespeaks a defensive posture that is comes from the long years of him being essentially the only left um, person on, on the, or not, if not the only one, at least, at least one of a, one or two or three left people on the public stage in the United States. And certainly in Congress, I mean, Dennis Kucinich was in Congress at one point and he was fairly, he was pretty far left and John Conyers was also fairly far left um, so uh, it's not like Sanders was absolutely alone, but I, I think overall, certainly in the Senate, he's very much alone, uh, even with Elizabeth Warren being sort of semi there in terms of being slightly left of center on some issues. So, um, but anyway, uh, in general, his, his political stance has been a defensive one he doesn't uh, use the insights of modern money theory to create an aggressive politics that asks for demands, what people need, um, and then using tax policy as a caboose, so to speak, of um, managing, among other things, demand, but also managing, uh, in other words, economic demand, um, but also as a means of like social policy, uh, and and creating certain outcomes rather than a funding mechanism, which is uh, what conventional accounts of taxation uh, have uh, suggested, but have not has not been borne out by reality in the fiat currency era. So anyway, um, so AOC, while she is not a hundred percent, she does not sometimes talk in the, within the quote unquote paradigm of modern money theory. Uh, beyond that, though, she has a great, she, she does seem more influenced by it. We, we, you know, she has had contacts with many uh, modern money theory um, economists and people in that area. And um, I don't think she's against it by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so, and she is the progenitor of the Green New Deal in its current form. And that, I think, is the the overarching framework for a... Now, I'm biased in that climate has been my concern for the last 15, 18 years or so, um, 15, 17 years or so, has been my motivating issue and my focus of my intellectual works, my, my work as a professional work, um, mostly, not entirely, but in, in good portion. So um, it, 
I think that that as a as a policy though it is the big kahuna in terms of it is the big overarching policy framework that uh, has trillions of dollars worth of um, actions that are positive social and environmental actions that need to be taken by actors within the U.S. economy, some of which are not required to be subsidized directly by the government. Um, but in any case, government would uh, need to invest a large, large amount of money in certain pieces of infrastructure um, that are unlikely or impossible or uh, not, uh, it's not desirable for the, the private sector build them. We need them to be public goods, like a high-speed rail system, like a, a super grid, a renewable energy super grid that uh, shares energy across different climate zones or, or, or weather zones. So uh, it balances out the flow of energy into the grid. So anyway, so all those things require a visionary government level or an international level uh, planning. And a Green New Deal could be outfitted with such a project and a plan. A Green New Deal should have that kind of a um, large scale investment program. And, and, uh, and then also the social programs as part of a deal, it's a, it's a reconfiguration, it's a new social contract. And this social contract involves rescuing humanity via government action, via private action, among other things, but mostly government led by government action, but with obviously with people in their households and also in companies of various kinds, cooperatives, whatever, um, operating in ways in which they are contributing to the overall overarching goal of a uh, reducing the level of, of carbon in the atmosphere, certainly stopping the increase. And right now we're not even there, but then also reducing the amount of carbon in the air uh, or greenhouse gases in the air. So it's a it's something that is not still not a, a huge issue for many Americans, but um, it's unfortunately becoming more and more of an issue because of climate disasters. And and anyway, the Green New Deal is getting out ahead of it. And it's also so this creates the opportunity for a visionary politician. And I think AOC is a visionary politician and is um, she's working out some of her vision. She's not, but she has some of the basic outlines of it already, you know, as part of her value system. And I think she can um, create the excitement and the um, uh, in in people in general, um, the the sense of hope that people have lost, and she's a a, a contrast. She's she's acknowledged to be by almost by default to to be the leader of the progressive younger politicians. In um, she's she's not formally a leader, but she is um, uh, referred to or her lead is followed often. And she's often looked to as, and she's starting to act like a leader, okay? And um, and I think that's good. And I think, uh, I mean, she's also, for someone who has that potential, and she's quite a, a modest person, relatively speaking, but she's not without, I think, ambition, without even vanity, so forth and so on. But um, uh, uh, she's... Um, uh, uh, someone who and you need some uh, some nerve you see need, need to be a leader of a big movement you need some nerve some sense of a huge ambition and she i think carries some of that ambition and i think to help her i think we need to have a a campaign that's a movement campaign that's about these concrete issues so green new deal the biggest green new deal that you can not not a mini green new deal but the overarching big kahuna, I think that's a, a couple trillion dollar a year investment by government uh, plus regulations and laws and so forth and so on. So it's a big overarching thing. It would take, I I would like people with uh, law, legal backgrounds, I'm not one of them, but 
but a, a, a cadre of people to start writing um, outlines of what the what various laws are or formats for various laws that would be or bills that would be passed within the Green New Deal framework and starting to put that out there right now. Um, and we have already some of them. OK, so it's not like we don't have any, but just to, to start to front run uh, the needs, even though some of these bills will only get 10 votes or 15 votes in, in, if they were to put to a vote right now. But um, anyway, so the Green New Deal and then obviously social safety net, a uh, job guarantee, uh, Medicare for all, um, free uh, public college um, and, and um, uh, public grad school, uh, and therefore also paying off uh, existing student loan debt. So a different approach to financing education. And um, so all of these things are part of this new social contract that the Green New Deal could offer. And so I think what I'm working against here is, I mean, there's a couple of things. One is that AOC does make what I consider to be mistakes and other people consider to be mistakes on a, I don't know about regular basis, but on and off basis, okay. I think she makes up for those quote unquote mistakes with creative and original interventions into our politics and our public discourse more generally that, that make those things more than balance them out, okay. And she may, will continue to do things that I don't necessarily agree with and maybe other people don't necessarily agree with. Um, but she seems to be going in the right direction, okay? And in general, from my perspective. Um, now, uh, so I think she could, by running, could stimulate a whole bunch of, in other words, create a focal point and a, a clearinghouse for the ideas that many local elections are currently are are running on where and some progressives are failing to against the machine, the Democratic Party machine. So the the reason why I'm suggesting that she run is that progressives need to get a lot more aggressive in relationship to the Democratic Party machine and to the established Democratic establishment. It's not called a machine right now um, because that machine has a sort of association with local politics in a way that so this is a, a national uh, apparatus of the Democratic Party that is um, uh, corporate in, in its focus and it's um, uh, I, I might, might sneeze I don't know if I'm going to sneeze but um, anyway it's um, uh, anyway it's it's allergy season here so um, so anyway so uh, and they have been running various aggressive, anti-progressive campaigns. And progressives need to create their own aggressive uh, initiative and not just be sitting ducks, so to speak, for the, um, the democratic establishment to try to take them down. So I think one of those things to do is, I think AOC needs to mobilize the latent support that she has and the and her general talents and and she strikes me as being much more serious <clears throat> and I think intelligent in the right ways emotionally intelligent and also um, she's smart she's 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 thoughtful and I think um, uh, she needs to show her talents and she needs to and not hide them and to use them as she I think as she wishes to to further the cause of justice of of sustainability all the things that she cares about and um, so and I she does sincerely care about those things I'm pretty sure so um, anyway so uh, so she needs to and the way to make those things available to the public <clears throat> while at great cost and and effort by her and other people who would be helping her 
is through a presidential campaign, unfortunately. So even though people criticize the idea of presidential campaigns being so important and so forth and so on, they do um, mobilize the media. And the media, unfortunately, has an extremely powerful role in American politics. Even though we love the idea of a grassroots movement that somehow uh, defies the media narrative and shapes it, and they happen, and the labor movement, the new labor movement, definitely is doing that. On a, it still needs the new labor movement, community organizations, they need help, they need help from government side as well. It's not just simply an autonomous social movement. And unfortunately, media has created shapes what people how people think about things including these movements that are spontaneous so one format or way to for the progressive movement to get some more media coverage even if it's negative is to run a presidential candidate um, as bernie sanders did now obviously bernie sanders uh, didn't get uh, you know was often shut out of the media and he didn't um, he didn't get nearly the coverage of Donald Trump, for instance, in 2016. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Here. Um, I, I told you I'd sneeze. So anyway, he um, he didn't uh, get the coverage. Of, and, and, and so you can't rely on the media to be your conduit for all of your um, information that you want to show, share with the public, you need a movement. So I think AOC both has the potential to organize, to mobilize many young people and many not so young people to go and fight for her and also go and fight for people who have similar ideas in different congressional races and so forth and so on. So uh, anyway, so that we need to have such an intervention, I think, to counteract to some degree that even though the media will continue to try to shape her campaign or let's potential campaign or some other progressive who runs in 2024 um she uh she is a a compelling charismatic figure that the media doesn't want to let go of so um and and so they will often cover her and even against their own corporate interests, let's say, okay? So, and that's, they should, it should be their journalistic interest to cover her no matter what. But anyway, but the media is, is part of the corporate elite and they have been managing, co-managing the society and, and managing consent and creating consent for the business status quo. So, she would represent a break from that and um, and she would be getting lots of negative press, among other things. But the negative press is something that she's had, dealt with, with before. And fear of negative press cannot stop any progressive. OK, they simply you have to either take it. And live with it or you shape it, you re you reshape it, you re. And you still you still send out your messages, you still get and, and AOC has a good potential or very good potential to turn around, you know, undercutting and negative, uh, let's say, reporter questions and so forth and so on that she might get. So anyway, so the timing of this is very, very important because, I mean, we don't have much time left at all. And that's why the word extinction comes in uh, to my title, among other things. We don't have much time at all. So this is also consonant with the timeline that I think AOC believes in that, and we in the climate movement believe. So we need to be getting on the stick very rapidly. So even if for whatever reason she doesn't win in 2024, I assume her campaign will leave a trail of very, you know, lots of more people in Congress who are uh, supporting a Green New Deal and um, other policies like um, Medicare for all that, and also that it will be a significant, um, again, and I also use the word mediocrity, the 
The current Democratic Party leadership is extremely mediocre, corporatist, corrupt, um, and uh, we need someone, our best people running. And she's one of the best politicians. She is, she's high quality. She's a high quality legislator, uh, organizer, and uh, community organizer, um, and also a um, good person and uh, a sharp thinker and, and, and a thoughtful person. So I think we need to have that kind of person running for leadership positions, the highest leadership positions. And I think she should skip a step and, and run for president. So anyway, so there you have it. And um, if you have your own, if you have your, your idea, your own thoughts about, you know, that you'd like to share uh, about AOC and her political campaign, political career, and, and what do you think of this idea? Please share them in the comments. If you like this video, please like it. And also, if you're enjoying Politics 2100 or getting something out of it, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.